Hey folks, Dr. Mike here with Jared Feather for Renaissance Periodization. We are gonna show you how to not do incline dumbbell presses and how to do them. Remember, incline dumbbell presses are a chest exercise focusing on the majority of chest hypertrophy with a slight bias to the upper pecs, but the front delt and triceps will also get a hypertrophic effect. The target really is the upper pecs. So let's remember that as we go through these tips and tricks to make sure you're doing this not wrong and doing it right. The first mistake is looking for an ideal incline to activate the pecs or something like that. The target is the upper pecs. And the more you incline, the more the upper pecs are involved until they're not involved much anymore and the front delts take over too much. And then if you lower the incline a ton, you actually get more and more and more whole pec activation, but at some point the upper part of the pecs aren't getting as big of a fraction of that as they were. So what's the right answer? The right answer is feel it out. Try all three inclines, lower incline, medium incline, and high incline being basically 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and around 60 degrees. See how they feel. Are they hitting the upper chest? Do you feel tension through your upper chest? Is there burn through your upper chest? Is there a pump in your upper chest when you're done with a few sets? And is the upper chest feeling weak and really weird and lower in strength after you've done whatever variation you've done? If it turns out that the low incline blasts your upper chest and the high incline and medium incline really just hit your front delts, low incline it is. On the other hand, if the low incline hits just mostly the rest of your pec, but the upper pec isn't really prioritized and you only really feel the high incline in your upper pec, that's your go-to. Try both, start at 45 degrees, work your way from there based on what the muscle is sensing in your body and don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Next mistake is thinking there's an absolute 100% right way to flare the elbows. It's perfectly fine to do inclines with your elbows tucked in close as long as you're feeling your upper pecs being stimulated and your shoulders and elbows feel comfortable in that position and you can produce a lot of force. Jared shows what that looks like. Incline press like that is 100% fine. And then if you elbow flare a little bit more, hit it, that's totally cool too, as long as you are feeling your upper pecs and everything else feels good. And then if you wanna take all the way out, that's also super awesome. A lot of people really feel their chest this way. If your shoulders are really hurting in this position, don't do it. Any one of these is okay, so long as you are feeling your pecs stimulated and your joints feel good. The next mistake in the incline dumbbell press is to not have your chest or rib cage properly expanded. And the other version of that is too extreme of an expansion where you're attracting too much. So what we don't wanna see is a completely flat or rounded back, your shoulders forward, and then you're trying to incline press like that. It exposes the shoulders to not such a great position. A lot of times the front delts take over and the triceps do. You don't get a deep stretch of your pecs at the bottom, not the best. What you wanna do is just slightly arch your back, but more think of it expanding your ribs, depress your scapula a little bit, hit some reps, Jared. That's a really great looking incline press and you get a full extension at the top and a big stretch at the bottom, everything's nice and stable. What you don't wanna do is take this too far and start doing a power lifting setup where you're tucking your feet, arching as much as you can. At that point, just reduce the incline. And then what ends up happening is if Jared's gonna try to lock out, notice that he can't even lock out his elbows to complete a rep because his scaps are so far behind him. You don't wanna get into extremes. You wanna stay, go back to the right one, Jared. Just a normal elevated chest, scaps down but not back, and then all of a sudden you're doing high quality reps. Next mistake is too low of a range of motion. It's super tempting to not lock the dumbbells all the way out. Okay, that doesn't mean you have to press them for three seconds at the top with your triceps, but a good lockout just means you did a full job of using your pecs and your triceps. And of course, the much more common is not going all the way down. If you're freaky long and you're super narrow rib cage, you're very inflexible shoulders, you may actually be able to get a full pack stretch without going all the way down. That's incredibly rare. 95 out of 100 at least, folks you'll see on the internet, even jack pro bodybuilders that don't go all the way down with any kind of dumbbell presses are just trying to use more weight to show off to themselves mostly and they haven't thought it through. So, you know, a lot of folks stop short of that unless you have gigantic arms and everything super bound up, you probably don't need to do that. A really good way to ensure you're going all the way down is to gently touch your outer shoulders with the dumbbells every single time, pause for a split second and come all the way back up. Jared, show us what, show us, uh, what that looks like. All the way up, Jared's gonna come and gently touch shoulders and all the way back. 
That way, when you touch your shoulders gently, you know you're getting good enough stretch, you don't have to worry about it. Show us what some crappy lap reps look like. Be a pro bodybuilder real quick. You're locking out too much. You got to do only mid range. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, pump it out, baby. War time, war brother, iron and steel. Don't do that. Next mistake, super related to the ROM mistake, is doing different range of motion with every rep. You have to have a standard. If you're not flexible enough to touch your shoulders and lock out at the top, at least get to where you're going down to the same relative position. Go down to your ears or something like that and then come all the way back up. Almost certainly you will be flexible, so go all the way down. But if you're not, at least keep every rep the same. Show us, Jared, what a bunch of different reps look like. People say, oh, I'm doing incline press. We'll do a good full range of motion for the first one. And then the next one, they won't lock out all the way and then they won't come down all the way. And it's like, how many reps is that? Who knows, right? Every rep, show it right, should look essentially the same all the way down and all the way up. How many reps did you do? One, two, it's super easy to count because all the reps are the same. Good enough, Jared. So have consistency by doing the right thing every single time. Even if you have to cut your reps for whatever reason, shoulder pain or something, cut them to the same depth every single time so you can track your progress, apply the right amount of stimulus, not be confused about if you've been getting stronger or if you're actually just cheating the reps more. Not controlling the eccentric is the next mistake. The eccentric lengthening contraction is hugely stimulative of hypertrophy and by not dive bobbing our inclines, we get to have more muscle growth and be safer, okay? It's tempting to just rocket the weights up and then let them come back down without expanding any energy. You will be able to do more reps like that. We're not in here to do reps. We're in here to have every single rep be high quality, stimulating the muscle. Jared, show us what it's like to really be a, an inclining machine and not control the rep. And it comes down and then, oh, and it comes down and something's going on and you're even doing too good of a job with this. There you go, drop them, drop them on yourself. Yes, yes, much better, there it is, to have control on the eccentric, shows what that looks like. Now that doesn't mean each rep is five seconds on the eccentric, just under control. You're still activating your pecs and triceps, gentle touch and up and control and up. Notice it's really a one second eccentric he's doing, but he's still under control. He's still getting the maximum benefit of the movement without risking too much injury. Believe it or not, the incline dumbbell bench is not a hip exercise. Crazy, I know. I thought you were supposed to be using hip drive for all the stuff. Here's the thing. If you solidly plant your feet into the ground, a little bit of hip drive without your butt leaving the seat is totally fine for maximizing concentric force so long as your eccentric is really well controlled. However, if your butt is coming off the seat, what the fuck are you doing? You train your upper pecs by using your upper pecs to power the movement. It has nothing to do with the hips. So you definitely don't want to be loosey-goosey. You want to be nice and solid. Notice he has his feet planted. His hips are wedged into the seat and he's going to do a good rep. Perfect. Control. And even if it's powerful, do a powerful rep, Jared, but don't let your hips come up. Really high power. Everything is still stable. Now, if he wanted to cheat himself and add a ton of fatigue for no reason, yeah, get it. Really pop those hips. Hell yeah, who knows what's going on? Now at that point, you're getting extra credit for a test that's never gonna happen for someone who's not counting anything, okay? Don't use your hips. It's totally fine to be super stable, and have a little bit of hip drive in there. You never want your butt to leave the actual bench because yeah, you'll get more reps, but it won't increase your pec stimulus at all, which is why you're doing this. And also it'll generate a lot of fatigue moving your whole body. And also a lot of times when you have to do that, you're already well beyond normal failure. Going beyond failure is super, super fatiguing. It's not worth the stimulus in most cases. The last mistake is misusing dumbbell loads. This is going to be kind of a, an interesting thing you may not have heard before, but here's the deal on movements like dumbbell movements that are relatively unstable at very heavy loads, instability detected by the body reduces your maximum ability to produce force. So sets of five to 10 in the dumbbell press end up not producing nearly as much force as sets of five to 10 in the barbell press because the barbell is auto-stabilized, Smith machine as well, if you're into that sort of thing, but the dumbbells get really awkward when they're really heavy and you spend way more neural energy or neural priority controlling them than you do actually pushing with your upper pecs. If you want to go heavy, sets of five to 10 are best done barbells, Smith machines, and other machines for incline pressing. For dumbbells, you probably want to save dumbbells for sets of 10 to 20 reps. 
What about 20 to 30 reps? You can use dumbbells, but you have another problem. Fatigue in the 20 plus rep range starts to destabilize your technique because you're in so much pain, right? That you're focused more on getting the reps done than actually getting good reps. It's much better to do that rep range on a machine where you're locked in. The technique is the same every time and you can just go, go, go. In addition to that, something I've experienced is you actually start to have forearm cramping or your forearms get tired holding the dumbbells like this the entire time. Sets of 25, a lot of times, turns into just forearm pain. You don't even know what you're training anymore. Ideally, there are for sure exceptions to this, Incline dumbbell pressing should be done in the 10 to 20 rep range, save barbell free weights and machines for the five to 10, especially Smith machine and barbell free weights. And for the 20 to 30, for sure is a good time to use machines and not use dumbbells. Folks, that's it for incline dumbbell pressing. Do the movement right, do it consistently, and you will see progress. Don't worry about how much weight you're doing, just be concerned with good technique and you'll automatically get stronger over time thing is, if you do the dumbbell incline all wrong, you end up having to use more weight, which is super annoying. You need training partners to load the dumbbells up on you. It's not a race to who can do the 200s. It's a race in some sense to see who can get the bigger pecs. The way you get the bigger pecs is to do the movement right. If you have questions or comments, shoot them into the comments below. If you want us to do other videos and other exercises, please shoot that in there. And if you want to help answer some questions, by all means do help everyone out there. If you know the answer, answer someone's questions. Folks, thank you so much. We'll see you next time for the next exercise.